Hi everyone. Now we're moving to the chapter of or the topic of operations, and uh, specifically um, chapter four point one point one, the production or transformational process, where we will be learning about four key parts: um, understanding what operation management means, uh, a revisit to factors of production what is transformational process, as well as operations and added value. Basically, what is the relationship between the two? Hopefully, or we'll well, uh, be ready to get your mind blown like what you see on this picture here. All right. Now, what is operations management? So if you recall the word maybe you don't recall let me just explain to you as simple as possible to operate on something is to make new or to create new to make things better right so in business operations management is referring to inputs and the transformation of those inputs into outputs or the creation of those inputs into outputs and why is that so so that these outputs basically it is created in a form of goods or services could be made easily um, you know could be made for you which means that you could actually purchase it use it consume it as it is intended to be so in companies when we talk about operations management we can imagine um, the use of factors of production as you see on the see on the screen here is very much um, used in operations okay so if you recall what factors of production is i'm going to put out the, the definitions right here on the slide for you to have a look this is concerning four areas land labor capital and enterprise where we have learned that businesses require the factors of production in anything that they want to do right to start especially if they want to get into a business right so you need to have a land or a place where the business operates from you need to have labor or people even if it's just a one-man show someone to run and manage the business capital in terms of tools or machines that's needed to uh, make the goods or services and also that brain behind the decision to make that particular good or service right that entrepreneurial skills to make sure that whatever you're going to produce is going to help your business grow so i hope um, you understood a little bit about what the definition means let's move on to the second part the transformation process so just like the word means it is moving from how a raw material is moved uh, from an input to a final good or service. So transformation process is defined as an activity or group of activities. So it doesn't mean there's just one thing to do and then you get voila, an output or a product. It takes a series of activities to transform one or more inputs, more than one material sometimes, and then adding value to them. So you are going to have a recap of added value here, adding value to them, and then it becomes a, an, an output for customers to buy. So there are many keywords here. It is not just one activity to transform. There are many series of activities, not one output, but it could be many, uh, sorry, not one output, but one input. It could be many inputs and then adding value to those inputs so that it becomes uh, an output that customers will want to buy. Okay, so the transformational process goes through this loop from inputs to outputs and then you have this transformation process where value is added from input to become output. Okay, so here are uh, some of the keywords. Inputs is what you've learned before, the factors of production. In the transformation process, to transform a particular good or service uh, in operations management, we also use either capital intensive or labor intensive, basically using machines or people to help the production or the transformation to take place. And then right after the transformation happens, you would have an output or outputs that are ready either in the form of finished goods, services, or even components that to be that could be used by other firms. To give you an example, let's look at a computer manufacturer where in terms of inputs, you still need land, a factory, labor, workers to in the assembly line to manage the machineries, the capital, uh, tools or machines to produce the computer, and also the enterprise, the brains behind the decision to make a computer. Right now, in the transformation process, uh, it is going through either labor intensive means or capital intensive to produce tangible goods and, and or intangible service.
And in the output, of course, you would have a finished good or a computer ready to be sold. Or this finished good could also be a service or another a raw chip, for example, you know, to be sold to other firms. Now, let's move on to the next part. Operations and added value. This is a place where we do a bit of a recap. So do you remember added value? It's basically the difference between the price of the finished good and the cost to make the product. So you would also remember this line very clearly that added value is not the same of, as profit because it only considers the direct cost of making the product. So if you're not sure what this means, you've got the recap again in chapter one, the very first chapter of your business study in AS. Now operations, which you've just learned, is concerned with inputs, right? to provide outputs in the form of goods and service. And in operations, there's a very important element called the transformation process. So let's just understand these two terms separately first, and then we'll connect it in the next slide. Now, to remember them separately, you've got to understand what added value means and what we've just learned about operations, which is the transformation of inputs, which, uh, which is the uh, factors of productions, into outputs, finished form of goods or services, or even raw materials for a, another firm. Now, what is the relationship between operations and added value? Now, here's where it gets interesting. Okay, so this relates to the transformation process. Okay, because in the transformation process, the raw materials are, uh, to make a house is converted and it becomes a home where people look at it and say, oh, it's a beautiful house. I want to make a home here. I want to stay here. Right. So that's the, that's the, 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 the importance of the transformation process. And in the transformation process, is where added value happens, right? Added value is the reason why the price of the house could be very high beyond the direct cost of making it because of the effort of the construction workers and engineers who help design and make the house worth buying at such a high price, right? So this is the relationship between operations and added value. If there is more added value added into the transformation process, then the house could be priced high, making the added value even higher. Okay. Now, how does operations contribute to added value? There are three ways here. Through the efficiency of the production, through quality, and through flexibility and innovation. Don't worry. We'll explain. I'll explain to you further on these three parts now. Okay, ways the operations contribute towards added value. How does the operation process increase added value? All right. Now, in the operations process, efficiency means they can keep costs low. So the pricing could be more competitive. So if operations is done right, they could keep the cost low. All right. And which means if they have skilled people, good machines, then errors and inefficiencies could be reduced so much that they could keep their price competitive, making it affordable and also um, desirable for customers to buy. In terms of quality, uh, producing quality goods, meeting um producing quality goods that meets customers' expectations and also in terms of flexibility where operations can ensure that the production is flexible and innovative, that it could change and meet customer demands. So the transformation process, as you can see, from uh, using the factors of production to the final, ho final house or final you know, uh, product, which is a house in this example, helps to increase the added value when the efficiency is kept low, keeping costs low, quality is still high and the business is able to immediately, um, not immediately, but able to be very flexible in production times and innovate and change. For example, if they are creating, you know, in a residential area where each house can be customized, the colors can be customized based on what the customer wants, right? It means they're able to innovate and be flexible for that. That could also increase added value and that would mean it would make the pricing of the house even more competitive and more attractive that customers can see, oh, this is what I'm really paying for actually and I don't mind paying this much for it because it it is really, really good. They see the quality, they see the efficiency, they see the product which they're happy about. 
All right. Now, oh, okay, and it's a wrap. So this is the final slide. Let's see what we have here. Uh, number one, it's good for you to list and define the terms learned in this lesson. So you learned about what operation management is, factors of production, transformation process, and so forth. So all those things, please have a little notebook and key in all those key words and their definitions because it'll really help you with your exam preparation. And number two, explain how operations management could be applied in a service industry for a web designer. I've not touched much on service in my topic, but I think you could be able, you would be able to test yourself. All right. Now, just to help you plan or to help you answer, I'm not going to give you the answers, but I'll help you plan your points. Step one is planning your points, which is identifying what is the factors of production for a web designer, right? In terms of land, labor, capital, and enterprise. And then describe the transformation process for a web designer in terms of the inputs required, the transformation process, and also the final output. Okay, and then once you've planned your points very briefly, you can write your answer. I've not given a mark, uh, you know, allocation here, which means that you could write freely as much as you want, but I would suggest you refer to the points in step one where you've written so that your answer is contained. Um, and, and if you find that you want to explain further, just for your own understanding, you can do that as well. All right, so... Yeah, and that's the end of our lesson for now. Um, there is a website that you can reach out to for any questions, www.learning-madeeasy.com. And until I talk to you again in the next video, have a good day.